Hi, Greedy 3 Ds. Welcome to today's episode. Now, you know how much I love my GK2. It is my go-to printer. It is my bestie. Well, Uniformation have very kindly sent me a wash and a cure station to test and review for you guys today. So that's exactly what we're going to do. If you want to see how I get on with these brand new bits of kit that I've never used before, stay tuned. Now, as you would expect with Uniformation, the packaging process was wonderfully, wonderfully packed. Everything was in there, everything I needed. It was all securely packed in a nice thick foam. And I've just unpacked everything quickly here so you can see everything that's included. You've got two foam pads and a metal bracket. You've got a replacement pad for the top. You've got a cage, a tube, a spare a valvey bit the books and an electricity lead that for me in the UK was the wrong lead. Come on, Uniformation, send the right leads to the right people, please. Let's have a little closer look at the tray. It's a nice big tray with some feet at the bottom to keep it off the bottom. Very, very handy. And inside there, you can see there is no impeller, propeller. It is all done with sound waves. All very clever. We'll come to that in a bit. It's got a lift up metal lid. This has got a little pad around it to stop any of the smells emanating out when the lid is closed. And it's got two handles, one either side. That makes it really good, considering the seven litres in this stuff when it's full. gets a bit heavy, so you can carry it easily. This tube here is another great innovative idea how to empty it. You're not going to empty this thing out by tipping it over. So it gives you this tube here. And on the back of the cleaner, you will see this valve, this little thread here, and a valve, an on-off valve. Very, very clever. Let's look at how we drain this machine. You get your said tube and you screw it all the way in until it is nice and tight. And all you need to do then is when you want to empty it is you turn the little valve and it will empty the solution. Wonderful. What do we do with that tube when we're not using it? Hey, you ask. Well, there's a handy little bracket that you can leave it on so you haven't got to worry about it dangling at the back. Now, you will need a little bit of clearance at the back when you put this in. It does stick out a little bit, but what a great idea for emptying. Now, just, just put the assembly together. You just put one of those foam pads pads inside, take the little metallic bracket that also comes with it and lay that in. And that is it. Done. You are ready to go with your first clean. It's really, really simple. Really, really easy. The good thing I like about this is when you get the Unification uh, build plate from your GK2, it fits perfectly, as you can see. What a perfect idea. The two go together. They marry together wonderfully. Now, if you want to use this with a model in situ, you're obviously going to need to have it filled to the brim with all of its seven litres because you want it to dip into the solution there. And we'll, we'll come back to seeing it in action later. But what a great idea that it actually all fits together marvellously. I like the fact that it comes with this nice big tray as well. If you want to clean some bigger items, you can just drop them in the tray and away you go. That's really, really helpful to have. And you don't need to use it. And we'll come to again how we're going to use it in a moment. I think it's worth taking a moment just to explain how the Uniformation ultrasound cleaner works. Now, normal cleaners that you see all the time use a propeller on a magnetic basis at the bottom of the vat. And that spins around. It agitates the liquid in the vat, which then removes the surface dirty layer of resin that sits on the top of your model and gets rid of it that way. Now, information have gone a different way. They're using ultrasonics. Now, ultrasonics uses sound waves to vibrate the dirt off. It has a little sound generator built into it. The ultrasonic sound vibrates your model at a, at a microscopic level almost. You can see the water moving very, very slightly, and this by default shakes the dirt away from it. It's a different approach. It's not a new approach. Ultrasonic cleaners have been used for years and years and years. I used them 30 odd years ago when I was a silversmith. They're used mostly now for cleaning jewellery. But what a great way of cleaning your resin 3D prints with ultrasonic cleaning vibrations. Now, before we go any further, we really do need to address the elephant in the room. And that is the big question at the moment. Is it safe or not to use IPA in an ultrasonic cleaner? Well, there are potentially inherent risks to using uh, IPA because of its flammable nature and a risk of combustion. So I asked Uniformation directly the question, 
can I use safely IPA in your ultrasonic cleaning station? And this is what they said. It is safe to put alcohol into the wash station, but please note that you need to place the wash station in a ventilated environment and the power supply needs the ground wire to prevent static electricity. In addition to alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and water is okay to put into the wash station. Now a search on the mighty Google, however, gives us very different answers and as i say this is something that could split a room let's have a look what crest ultrasonics say using flammable solvents in an ultrasonic cleaner can pose several risks the most immediate risk is the potential for a fire solvents can ignite from a spark or any form of heat explosion risk if the solvent vapors reach a specific concentration they can cause an explosion now I am no expert in this field so I'm going to say just this. Do your own research and make your own decisions. Do your own risk assessments before you decide whether to or whether not to. And leave in the comments below what experience you've had using or not using IPA. Now I've decided not to use IPA in here. I'm going to use some of this Sunlu resin detergent that Sunlu very kindly sent me and some of this Ultrasonic Pro that I got from Amazon and I will put a link in the description where I got this from. This is dilutable 10 to 1 and all I'm going to do is add simple tap water, not distilled water, tap water and I'm going to put three litres of tap water in there and once the three litres of just plain old water in there I'm going to use that one litre of the detergent get all of that in there and then I'm going to use around about 10% of that mix so about 40 to 50 mils of this cleaning solution just in there and now Mrs Greedy has very kindly donated a couple of rings to me to clean for her and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them in a bag put some solution in the bag I don't want any of the diamonds to fall out and if they do did fall out then I'm going to catch him in that bag she would kill me if I lost her diamond so that solution is in the bag the rings are in there and you can see them fizzing along nicely and getting all that grime and dirt off her wonderful diamond rings god I am a fantastic husband aren't I and there they are on the wonderful Mrs Greedy's fingers and they're looking beautiful and clean and all the uh, the grubby dirty bits that get ingrained in rings has all been cleaned out but you haven't come here to see rings you want to see 3D prints clean and you want to see things and use alcohol to clean some IPA. So I'm going to take one of these zip bags and I'll put a link in the description where I got this from and then I'm going to take some just simple IPA and I'm going to pour it into the zip bag and what this does is it gives you a closed environment for the IPA so that no fumes can escape and it absolutely diminishes any risk of fire. So I'm still giving it an IPA clean and I'm going to use these Robocop legs as a little bit of an example that I've not long printed and not cleaned yet and I'm putting them into the IPA I'm going to squeeze all of the air out as much as I can seal the Ziploc bag so now I've got a sealed container a sealed unit with some prints in there there are resin prints that need IPA cleaning and I'm just going to pop that into the IPA and make sure that the solution is well under the solution that I put in there turn on the ultrasonic cleaner and there we go you can see a bag within the cleaner getting exactly the same treatment don't forget the ultrasonic waves will go through the bag into the solution the IPA inside the bag and give it a clean make sure you keep that lid closed at all times really important and a few seconds later well about three minutes to be precise there's the noise we're waiting for and I'm going to get them out and have a little look at them so I'm just going to pull the bag out now remember it's going to be a little bit wet so just pull that out carefully and pop it on some kitchen roll and then all I'm going to do is open up the bag get the parts out and have a look at them so what do I think of this ultrasonic cleaner? Well, so far, everything that I've thrown at it seems to be working absolutely fine. You've got the debate, of course, you have with the IPA and whether you're going to put that in there or not. And again, like I've said right the way through, this is going to be a decision you're going to have to make. But if you're happy using a bag, putting your IPA in the bag, and let's be honest, it is really, really simple. Cleaning IPA prints will not be a problem. If you're using water washable prints, even easier to just put them straight into the basket and clean them. So, yep. There's the print all cleaned. This was a normal resin print. It did need IPA to clean. And I'm happy to say it cleaned it. It's not sticky. It's not gunky. Everything's done as I would expect it to. Now that's done that in three minutes. Now what I suggest you do, and you don't have to do this if you want to leave it in the bags, up to you, but I'm not leaving IPA lying around in a bag. So I'm going to pour it back into the bottle and I'm going to be able to reuse that for another day. Yes, it's a little bit of a faff. Yes, some of the propeller 
cleaning solutions that you can get uh, any cubic elegoo there's a whole host out of there you just literally drop it in press it and put the ipa in and it cleans it but for me i'm quite impressed with the way that this ultrasonic cleaner cleans it and here i'm just going to put two water washable pieces straight into the basket into the solution yes before anybody says i know i should have had gloves on naughty or greedy and i'm going to turn it on and that is now cleaning in the solution that you saw me make up earlier it's a water washable resin and it's cleaning it wonderful so and i'm happy to say but when I got them out, I was really, really pleased with the cleanliness of them. They weren't sticky, they weren't messy. Getting the basket out was really easy. I just left it on the side to drain a little bit, pulled those things out. Yes, I've got my gloves on now. Let them drain like you would normally let them drain. I left them overnight to drain. That's what I would normally do for uh, purposes today, though, of course, I'm not going to. Just going to dry them off. And as I say, they're not sticky, they're not manky. I like this ultrasonic cleaner. I think it's a really, really good idea and I'm really, really pleased with it. Yeah, a little bit of a faff with the IPA, but for me, it's not a major faff. And, I, and I've worked with ultrasonic cleaners since I was a lad, so I'm happy with using it. Now, when we look at the curing side of the, uh, the deal here, the packing was exactly the same. Everything was good. The only thing they sent me again was a non UK plug. It just frustrates me so much and I don't know why they can't get it right to send the right plugs to the right places but hey ho. Here is the unit. It's a top loading unit. It looks like a microwave but it's not got a front door on it so you have to load your models into the top but you know what there's, there's enough room in there sideways but if you've got a really tall model you may find that you can't close the lid on it and if you can't close the lid on it you can't turn it on. So if you if you make really, really tall models and you can't lie them down in here, just check the measurements. Um, it might not be for you, if particularly tall prints are your bag. There is a, a turntable in the center of it and a little screw that comes with it and you pop the opaque side up. You just pop it in and you turn it down. Now the surface area of that is not bad at all. That's a fairly big curing station. The other ones that I used to have, the Elegoo and uh, the Anycubic, weren't that big. And for those of you that love the old stuff coming off, there we go. A little bit of peeling action for you, you pervos, you. Now, as I say, it's a top loading unit. Make sure that it's flat and there's some little legs underneath so you can get it nice and flat. And when it's all flat and ready to go, I'm going to pop in a couple of models. This is some Robocop models from Wicked. Turn it on. And uh, I've got to be honest, I find this quite hypnotic. I think it is a beautiful thing to see. It's lovely. I just wish it had a door on the front. The High Gears Curie Station has got a door on the front and that's probably my favourite curing station at the moment. But if you want to get your hands on this uniformation version or the cleaning station you're looking at about 149 150 dollars for the curing station and 260 dollars approximately for the wash station which are not horrendous prices in comparison now if we look at the uh, evidence here this is the uh, robocop after he's been all cured and i'm happy to say everything's cured as i'd expect it to be it doesn't feel tacky it doesn't feel sticky i'm really really happy with the end result of this and yet yeah, i can certainly recommend this uniformation wash and cure station I guess if I'm being a little bit picky, um, some of the components, the hinges seem a little bit cheap, but they haven't broken on me and they're doing the job. The surface area inside the cure station could be a bit taller, but I am being really picky. They've done pretty much everything that they needed to do. I hope you've enjoyed that greedy 3D. I hope you found that useful. Um, I know it's kind of going to split a room a little bit with the comments that I've made regarding the IPA or not IPA. My personal thoughts on it are I'm not going to risk it personally. I don't think I need to. I think I can make it work absolutely fine the way that I've showed you how I did it today. But what again, what you guys do is a bit of a disclaimer. It's totally up to you after you've done your own research, your own risk assessment, and you make your own decisions. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I hope you found it useful. If you want to support the channel, there's a number of ways you can do that. Please subscribe to the channel. It's free, quick, and easy. Just press that button down below there. If you want to join the Greedy 3D Patreon, all the information that you need will be in the description. You can join from as little as free to a couple of quid that just helps me carry on doing stuff like this. If you want to buy anything such as anything like this, there'll be a link in the uh, channel down below for you and a little bit will kick back as it will be an affiliate link, but only a little bit will kick back to me and uh, it won't cost you guys 
a penny more, I promise you that. So I hope you've enjoyed these reviews today. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I really do on this one want to hear your views, whether you agree with me, whether you don't agree with me. Have you had problems with IPA? Have you not had problems with it? Am I just being over precautious? Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you real, real soon on Greedy3D.